everyone. In the previous class, I introduced you to the material rock and rock masses. And then we discussed that what all are the tests that we conduct in the lab in order to find out uh, the mechanical properties, engineering properties of the intact rock. So, today we are going to learn few aspects related to coding of the rock specimen from the field, then sampling and then how we conduct the unconfined compressive strength of the intact rock in the lab. So, to start with uh, first let us learn few things about rock coding. So, uh, the rock samples these are recovered from the ground through the process called coring. This is little bit different than the soil samples that we get from boring. So, in uh, case of the soil samples what we do is that we go ahead with the boring and we conduct the SPT test and wherever needed that we keep collecting the soil samples. And in case if you want to have the undisturbed soil sample, then we insert the tube and then try to take that out. However, it is not the same here in case of the rocks. So, uh, in view of uh, higher strength of the rock, uh, it becomes necessary to use the thick walled core barrels uh, which are kind of tubes or pipes uh, with tips which is made up of uh, some of the hardest material such as diamond or tungsten carbide. So, what happens in this case is that rotary drill grinds away an annular zone around the sample and it advances into the ground. So, what happens in that, that process that these cuttings are washed out by the circulating water exactly in the similar manner which is adopted for wash boring in case of soils. So, you see that this is how we extract the specimen of the rocks from the field and you see how with the variation of depth these are arranged. So, you can see here this is uh, 2.5 meter then 3 meter and likewise here 5 meter, 6 meter and so on. So, these are called as core boxes in which as you keep collecting these rock cores from the field you just keep arranging them with reference to depth. So, somewhere uh, you will get uh, the loose material which may not be even rock, it may be soil and then somewhere uh, let us say here in this zone you get a long rock core. So, likewise here uh, these 5 boxes were cored from particular site, so of a particular borehole. So, I have just placed it all with the depth here. Now, what can be the drilling sizes? So, our International Society of Rock Mechanics which we in short call it as ISRM uh, recommends that one should go for NX size specimen which is having a diameter of 54 mm. However, we have other 3 sizes also EX, AX and BX having 23 millimeter, 28 millimeter and 41 millimeter diameter respectively. But most of the time we go ahead with NX size specimen which is 54 mm diameter. Please remember this. When we need to get the samples from the field, so there the question comes because uh, let us say a uh, site is there say for a tunnel. So, it will be maybe for few meters or few kilometers. So, the question comes from which location should we collect the sample. So, sampling aspects becomes most important and it should be done very very carefully to have the representation of the rock mass for the complete stretch where the excavation is to be there. So, these rock masses basically they are non-homogeneous 
and therefore the properties of the sample that you take from one portion of the rock mass it may be altogether different than what you get from the other location. So, the averages which are calculated from the test results these would be affected if you leave certain portion of the deposit and you do not sample it. So, it is very very important that samples should be collected from all portions of the deposit. How to make sure this? See what we do is that we conduct the lithological study before we go for the sampling and we mark the regions which differ from one to the other in their mineral composition, nature of cementing material, texture, degree of alteration and wherever there is a difference we mark on the cross section of the deposit and then we take the sample from each of these zones. In case if you have the bedding planes uh, with reference to bedded deposits these also should be clearly identified. Presence of cleavage planes, joints, cracks and other discontinuities also should be taken into account when we go for sampling in the field. Further, in case if you have the regions of faults, dikes and folds, these rock properties vary significantly and one should keep this in mind when you are going for sampling in the field. So, any geological feature, any change in mineralogy, any change in color, texture all these should be noted throughout the stretch of the proposed structure before we go ahead for the sampling. We should not miss any of these important features. Now, when we do this sampling and as I showed you that we arrange it in those core boxes, then the next step is how to transport these to the concern lab. We need to be very very careful about it because when you take out the uh, sample from the field, we need to carefully keep it in core boxes and then carefully transport it because it should not happen that during the process of the transportation some additional cracks, fresh cracks they are induced or generated. Okay. So, we have to do this transportation carefully so that the samples which we have collected from the field they are not subjected to excessive jolts and this might result in the induction of fresh cracks or cause extensions of pre-existing cracks because if this happens the material will deteriorate and we will not get the true representation of its engineering property. Now, let us say that I received the, these samples in the lab. How to prepare the specimen? So, there can be different types of specimen. So, we can have a regular specimen which can be cylindrical in nature or maybe prismatic or cubic. It can be irregular in shape or you can have a special shape specimens. So, in case you have the regular specimen and say it is the cylindrical one. Then uh, there are some standard length to diameter ratio for some of the tests which are listed here. So, compressive strength tests usually we take 2.5 to 3, but in case if you are not able to get that long uh, rock core then you can go ahead with even 2. So, usually it is varying between 2 to 3. In case if you have bending type of tests in that case L by D ratio 
327. For Brazilian tests, it is 0 0.521 and for punch tests, it is 0 0.22, 0 0.25. Again, we are focusing right now on the regular specimen because these only need lot of uh, care while their preparation. So, when the samples are available in the form of a large block, so what we do is we first cut them into uh, smaller ones on a machine or manually and then the cores are drilled out from these small blocks using either modified workshop drills or small quarry drills. And there comes the use of uh, lathe machine utilizing a coring bit. Take a look here on this picture. These are the pictures of uh, machines from our lab here in IIT Roorkee. So, uh, this is the machine that is used to extract the specimen from that small block. So, you can see here that this portion is the drill bit. Okay, we place the rock specimen, uh, rock sample here on this platform. So, you can see that one is kept here and you can see that this is having a circular hole that means one specimen has already been taken out from this sample. Uh, so, these samples they may not necessarily be such a nice uh, cube shape, they may be of irregular uh, shape block. Uh, and then from there you just extract the cylindrical specimen. Now as you have seen that length to diameter ratio is kind of uh, a range is there for a particular type of uh, test. So in that case when you are extracting the specimen you may not get that exact size as far as the length of the specimen is concerned. So, uh, usually we take that out little bit longer and then with the help of this cutting machine which is shown here in the other figure, we just uh, cut the specimen. So, you can see here that this is the blade. In this view it is not very clear but this is the blade. The specimen is fixed here and then this machine is on and this blade cuts the specimen and gives you a specific length of the specimen. So, using this extraction machine and the cutting machine, we can get the cylindrical specimen of required in the lab. So, once we obtain this the ends of the specimen or they may not have that particular finish. So, it is extremely important to finish the specimen ends to certain standards before we test. The reason being that ridges and hollows at the specimen ends from points of stress concentration and cause failure at relatively low load. So, basically say it is uh, strength is much higher, but because of the presence of these ridges and hollows the strength may come out to be very low in the lab. In case of the stronger rocks, these are more sensitive to end roughness as compared to weaker rocks. So, finish is to be given on a lathe machine or a surface grinder or a lapping machine. So, when we have the uh, cylindrical specimens for uh, compressive strength test. Uh, the ISRM committee has suggested that there should be the tolerance uh, as far as this finishing of the ends of the specimens is concerned. So, when we say that the finishing means the first specification says that the ends of the specimen shall be flat to 0 0.02 mm. So, for example, let us say that this is the cylindrical specimen. So, when we say that the ends of the specimen means I am referring to this surface and this surface. So, these two should be flat to 0 0.02 mm. Then ends of the specimen shall be perpendicular to these axis of the specimen within 0 0.001 
radiance. So, you see that this is what is the axis of the specimen. So, this angle should be 90 degree within plus minus 0 0.001 radian of the tolerance. So, see we have to be extremely careful when we prepare these specimens. The sides of the specimen these shall be smooth and free of abrupt irregularities and straight to within 0 0.3 mm over full length of the specimen. So, these are the sides of the specimen. So, these should be straight to within 0 0.3 mm over the entire length of the specimen that is this. In case if you have the sharp edges, one can blunt these by slight taps of a small hammer in case if you have irregular specimens. Dimension of these specimens are calculated from their weights uh, in case of uh, irregular specimens. Uh, the number of uh, specimens which are to be tested these depend upon the scatter or maybe in other words you can say that variability of the results or the level of accuracy that you need and the reliability of the mean value. But then usually for the UCS test we go ahead with 5 number of uh, specimen and for triaxial test we take 3 specimen for each confining pressure. So, in case of the triaxial test ideally you should test 9 specimens 3 at each confining pressure. And then you know that for the triaxial test you need to go for minimum of 3 confining pressure. So, that makes it total of the 9 specimen for 1 triaxial test. So, here I have uh, put uh, 2 photographs of uh, the specimen which were tested in uniaxial compressive uh, strength condition. Uh, the UCS of the intact rock is determined by testing the cylindrical specimen with the slenderness ratio of 2 and uh, slenderness ratio when we say that this is its diameter and this is its length. So, that is length to diameter ratio as 2. So, these were uh, tested and uh, you can see that the failed specimen how these look like. So, stress at any axial strain level is uh, sigma 1 prime that is given by P by A naught where P is the axial load and A naught be the cross sectional area of the specimen and corresponding to this stress the axial strain we write as delta L upon L naught where delta L is the deformation under the load P and L naught be the original length of the specimen. Now, at failure the compressive strength of the specimen is defined as P f upon A naught. Here P f is the load at failure and of course, A naught is the area of the cross section of specimen. We can also find out the diametrical strain that is the change in the diameter divided by the total diameter of the uh, specimen. Then we can find out the volumetric strain also which is the sum of axial strain plus twice that of the diametrical strain. So, if we try to plot the stress strain and the volumetric response of the intact rock in uniaxial compression test this is how it looks like. So, on x axis on one side you have epsilon 1 on another side you have epsilon 3 and on y axis you have the stress that is sigma 1 prime. So, this is how the axial strain varies this is the variation of epsilon 1 this is the variation of epsilon 3 and this is the variation for 
the volumetric strain. So that's a typical stress strain volumetric response of the intact rock that you will obtain when you go for the uh, UCS test. Now, how we can get uh, the various modulus values uh, from the results of uh, UCS test. So, uh, what we do is we plot uh, sigma 1 prime versus the axial strain for this purpose and this is what is the variation. So, basically three types of modulus uh, they are defined. The first one we call as the tangent modulus. This is usually at 50 percent of the failure stress. So, you take a look on this figure. So, the maximum point here this corresponds to the uh, failure stress that is represented by sigma 1 f prime. So, we take 50 percent of that and it corresponds to this level and we just take this point to this plot draw the tangent and whatever is the slope of this that is E t that is the tangent modulus. Then the second one is the secant modulus that is usually up to 50 percent of the failure stress. How to determine this? So, we have this level of the 50 percent of this sigma 1 f prime which is the failure stress. So, we join this origin to this particular point and the slope of this line this dotted line gives you secant modulus E s. Then one more modulus is defined which is the initial tangent modulus E naught and see this is indicated in the figure that how we can determine. So, we draw a tangent in the initial portion of the uh, stress strain curve and the slope gives me the value of E naught. So, when you have to determine the modulus, so you need to specify that which modulus that you want to find out whether it is tangent modulus, secant modulus or initial tangent modulus. So, in case if you uh, need to know more details about uh, this UCS test, you can refer to this uh, link uh, because many factors which influence the uh, UCS tests, uh, all these uh, various aspects have been discussed in detail in this particular lecture. So, uh, what we discussed in this lecture is that how to get the sample from the field, we need to be careful while transporting it and then how we can prepare the specimen uh, in the lab from these samples and how we can get uh, the uniaxial compressive strength and the uh, various moduli in case of the intact rock. So, in the next class we will take up some more lab tests to determine uh, the tensile strength and the shear strength parameters with reference to the intact rock. Thank you so much.